Uganda and welcome to the show on the spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. Now, Uganda is hosting the Non-Allied Movement Summit in Kampala. And after that, we have the G77 plus China. These are big summits. In fact, NAM is the second biggest uh, coming together of states other than the United Nations. Tomorrow, presidents, prime ministers, and other dignitaries begin to arrive. But what is in it for Uganda? What is in it for you as a Ugandan? Tonight, my guests include the Prime Minister of Uganda, the Right Honorable Robina Nabanja, but we also have the Minister of State for International Relations, Honorable Okerorion. And the biggest question I'm sure that you have, and I'll be putting this question to them, what are the dividends of, of NAM and what are the dividends of the G77, including, by the way, the IGAD meeting that has been taking place. Thank you for joining us this evening. Honorable Prime Minister, I want to thank you so much for allowing our cameras into your beautiful home. Good evening. Good evening. Honorable Kelorium, Minister of State for International Relations, thank you so much for joining us. Good evening, sir. Thank you. Good evening. It's an honor to be uh, here in uh, the Prime Minister's residence, uh, and it's a pleasure to interview us again. Let me first be very kind, because I need to. I'm, I need to sound very patriotic, and this I'm not making it up. For Uganda to host non-allied movement, over 120 countries to come here and have G77 plus China. Before that, you had the Speakers Conference. Before that, you had the IGAD Conference. For heaven's sake, for every Ugandan, we can say congratulations to Uganda, congratulations to the government for having been able to do this. Good evening, viewers. As you know, when we tell you that the NRM government has a capacity and ability to manage affairs of this country. This is what we usually mean. I'm not bragging, but that's the reality. Uh, to the entire world that uh, Uganda has got capacity. This shows that the country is secure. The country is secure. And so I want to thank the president and credit him and commend him for leading us and guiding us through the preparations of these conferences. And also my colleague, the cabinet ministers, including the vice president, uh, the speaker, deputy speaker, and the parliament of Uganda. Because remember we started with the, the, the speaker's conference, do you remember? And now we are in the first day of NAM, and tomorrow you know what is going to happen. So I want to stop here and allow the minister who is in charge to start from there. Yeah, talking about the ministers in charge, Honorable Kelorium, once again, let me say congratulations, because every capital on the continent would love to have NAM here, mm -hmm. would have to, G, to have G77. For you to be able to, to pull it off, your diplomatic missions around the world, including yourselves, must have really played punched above your weight. And here we are. But considering how our city is, how did you do this? Kamara, um, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, it is, uh, this opportunity is, uh, has come at the right time. It's come at a time when uh, we have uh, other individuals, mischief makers, who have been given uh, a bad name to Uganda, a very bad name to Kampala. We have had uh, big uh, countries who have been uh, giving advice, advice to tourists, businessmen, investors, not to come to Uganda. We have had uh, terrorist attacks in, in, in the region, in Uganda, or, or recent. So this is an opportunity to give, to showcase. Uganda is a destination for tourism, for investment, uh, an, a, a, an environment which is peaceful uh, for, for business, and uh, an environment which is, can create confidence in the national community. But more importantly, under the leadership of President Museveni, once more shows 
uh, that and then consolidates the issue that President Museveni uh, is uh, a regional leader, an influential leader, and one that uh, has now come to the international stage and being part of the international world order. So let me now come back to the real thing. Honorable Prime Minister, we are congratulating, yes, for having brought these summits here. But for that individual watching you, let me even use my case study, my village as a case study, from Ungezi in Kienjojo or in Kakumiro or in Chawente, mm. you know, what is the need for them? Where are the dividends? What, what should they say, Nam came to Kampala and this is what I'm getting? What is it? As I told you earlier, there are short-term and long-term benefits. Short-term, the hotels around Kampala have had to sell all that they had, the rooms, the foods, and remember this food comes from our farmers. I believe some of these farmers have got something. Then two, you are aware that all the media houses across the world are here because they were accrediting and I was getting reports. So we have been able to showcase who Uganda is. True or false? No, you actually can showcase but expose ourselves because if you actually put a magnifying glass, you don't even need a magnifying glass for Kampala. The situation is sorry. What do you mean? Our roads. In most cases, are pathetic, right, Honorable Prime Minister? In fact, I wonder are if, you the, sure? if the international camera has come to Kampala, what will they show? You mean to say you don't see anything? I've seen something in Macau. Because I remember you, you work near the conference center, Serena, are there potholes. You and me are adjacent to each other in, in our workplaces. Are there potholes? You say some roads have potholes, but not all. Isn't it? Not all. And this happens everywhere across the world. The long-term benefits um, are many also. Like I've told you, you have been able to showcase who Uganda is. Then too, I believe there are those people who have loved Uganda and they will come back. And that will boost our tourism. True or false? The tourism potential for Uganda is always there. I'm sure there are those who will be second time and third time visitors to come back because mm. Uganda always dazzles every oh, visitor. Goodbye, but you, Uganda always dazzles every visitor. But surely, you could have done much better in terms of preparation. Surely, because well, for I every was, summit I mean, that comes, my brother, the Prime was, we expect better infrastructure. My brother, we? my brother, I was still giving you the benefits, so that that man of Chegegwa. Where you come from? Chenjojo. Chenjojo. Yes. <laughs> um, members, we have got foreign exchange. Isn't it? Increase it, yeah. The foreign exchange has increased. We have got more dollars here. A dollar was almost going to 3,900. No. Today, it has been at 300, 800. 3,800. Mm. Isn't it? Tomorrow, you never know. That's what they call the balance of trade. Then we have been able at least to work around the clock and put some infrastructure. We did not have a facility that could host 5,000 delegates. We have it now. And that will attract other conferences in the near future. And once these conferences come, the man of Chegegwa and Kakumiru, definitely we have to save some of his things. We had a side event. Yes, yes this business one of forum. Serena, the business forum. I, I want, before I get no. to the business forum, you, you know, you don't, Prime Minister, you don't, you I, I don't want, want again to look into the preparation because, yes, I can believe the area of Makindye from Entebbe Airport to Munyonyo has been worked on. The, ro the roads are good. We have the street lights there. But you know, when you have a meeting of this magnitude, we thought it's going to leave Kampala in a better shape than it is. We thought even other divisions of the city I, I were going to be worked I, I upon, think, right, Honorable Prime Minister. I think, Kamara, there is a mis misunderstanding here that uh, if you have uh, a conference of this type magnitude, it means that uh, you 
you you try and resolve all the the, the negative issues in your country. I, I go to the United Nations General Assembly every year, Central New York. Okay, I see uh, beggars sleeping on the streets of New York, right under the United Nations streets. Between JF Kennedy and Manhattan, there are potholes, potholes, potholes. The city in that car, the car is bumping, bumping, bumping. In Manhattan, in New York, they don't have, they don't bother. What is important is what took you there, okay? And how did the thousand of us go to New York and we see this? But we don't complain. I've never complained about the potholes in New York. Uh, in New York, I've never complained about the beggars and who sleep in the streets, in the streets of New York. Uh, but the magnificent hotel, the Seven Star Hotel, we sleep in, the fantastic conference facilities that the United Nations gives us, gives us satisfaction. I, I wish you could go to Munyonyo tomorrow and interview every single uh, delegate that come there and ask them why, how, how they feel to be in Kampala. If you find one negative uh, uh, delegate that tell you that, well, I'm not satisfied with my hotel room. You know why? Because, because the you know, Kampala they you know, know is Munyonyo and Entebbe. No, no. And that's it. it. No. They will be honest with the, 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 the environment. That's what listen, expose them No, to. listen. I was talking to a delegate from uh, uh, yesterday. I was talking to a delegate from from, uh, from uh, Zimbabwe. And they were so impressed by the expressway from Entebbe right up to the hotel in Munyonyo. And they said this is a fantastic facility that flies over the, the, the swamp. Let me ask him, did we, did we organize Entebbe Expressway because of the conference? No, he didn't. But, but it I, has I, been I here. is that from Queen, you had to go and, and pluck off the street lights to come and fix now them that on this side. that is propaganda. Why do you really, the media people, why do you want always to go, uh, you know, that way? Why? Why? I'm wondering. I didn't expect that question from you. Because uh, I've, 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 I've tried to look it up and... And you found like it's true? It's true. Some, some it's true. True. No, because the contractor, no, look, the contractor who is working on our street rights is different from the one who is in Queen. Find out. The business if it was the same contractor, maybe you'd say, because he has a problem. Yeah. But the, it is clear. I can even give you a letter from UNRWA. I had to ask as the Prime Minister. I got that. As a Prime Minister, I asked the, the Executive Director of UNRWA, what is it that we are seeing so, in the social media? So you are saying he says they, they were in no, they were repairing they were street lights they from were, Eastern Uganda they to were, Kampala. They were repairing those street lights. Periodic maintenance. Hope you understand that. I wanted to inform members that through this trade summit, yes. You know, um, some of these people will come here and add value to our products. And once they add value to our products, the prices of our coffee, of our tea, you know how we are suffering with our tea. You come from Ch Chenjojo, where we have a problem of uh, prices of tea. Our prices of maize mm -hmm. will definitely go up. That's a long-term uh, dividend. I was with a business person on the Prime Minister. Um, who did not attend the trade summit. And quite a number of them said, well, whereas the business forum and trade summit is good, but the biggest number of the people in that hall were politicians. Why were politicians? That is not true. Oh, no. no, that's... No, 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 let me... Uh, you are talking... You began, you began with the uh, tourism sector, right? Uh, I remember yes. Prime Minister. One of the standout person who is in the tourism is in the Amos Wekesa. Uh, he was meeting, missing in that room. Uh, no. And one of his colleagues. Listen, no, yes. let, please, no, let me give you... Yes. Let me... Let no, me I'm giving you an example. No, let one me example. give you him. Has to be I'm working. giving you just one example. I know. That there are more politicians in the business forum please, than please, the business please, people. Please. You see, this is where you misunderstand, and this is where you, you, you come myopic in, in, in your explanation. It, uh, he doesn't, when we saw a case, does not have to be there. Don't, don't cling on that, sir. I only give no, no, it as, as an if, example. If you erased it, if you erased it, erased let, it let, me, you let me tell him, the members, the composition, because remember, this summit or this, this trade, uh, trade, uh, trade, 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 trade or symposium, was organized long ago. We started it. We said, how do we, as East Africa, benefit from the summit? Not only you, but East Africa. Yes, East Africa. It was an East African trade summit. And so we all agreed that let us invite all the stakeholders. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. was invited. Chamber of Commerce. 
and that is representative enough to the business people. Then we had uh, uh, Casita. Casita was was uh, represented the, the traders. We had the, the Uganda Manufacturers Association. We had the, the 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 private sector foundation. I don't think every trader was supposed to sit in that in that. In, you know how small the the, the 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 conference center is. So I don't think every every business person was supposed to sit there. Mm -hmm. We called the representatives. Yes, there were a few politicians. Maybe you don't want any politician there. The but we are the leaders. So we had a few ministers from here and other countries, and I don't think that was bad. And so, and, so, and the amount of deals, yes, the amount of deals, deals mm -hmm. that I am told, liable is informed that could be signed, could be anything up to one million US dollars. Yes, we Uganda agreed, MOUs in place, and the consolidating their next moving to agreements. Deals of one million dollars, billion. Okay, you, you talked about one million. No, my, my, my brother, one billion. Uganda Investment Authority, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Trade, and all these other relevant ministries were there to give support so that Ugandans are represent, represented. How did you want us to do it? All right, so if... if, if, if you wanted if, us to call everybody deals, from Chikubo? If, if deals worth a billion dollars were maybe... Uh, it's signed. signed, then that's something maybe to celebrate about. But of course, that's a, a step. You cannot say it is concluded. That's a journey towards getting a billion dollars. Mm. But, but honorable, right, honorable Prime Minister, I, I don't know how much money has been put into the preparation for NAM and G77. And, and when you get your balance sheet in the short term, whether you think that money uh, can be gotten back, or we're going to stay with the bragging rights, we hosted NAM, but then it left us indebted. What I want you to note is that, uh, like I told you earlier, we have short-term benefits and long-term. What I know, remember, I'm the one who chaired mm. the preparations of NAM as a Prime Minister of this country. From the inception, uh, we had a joint venture agreement or joint venture investment with MERA. I mean, people, if you don't say through deal, they will not understand. We used 40 million US dollars. Mera brought 50% uh, and the government of Uganda brought 50%. Through UDC. And it was a loan. Now, averagely, if you can count, you know how much money we used to have that beautiful facility. It's owned by both government of Uganda and the uh, Mera investment. And uh, to me, it's an achievement, a big achievement for this country. Then two, uh, these operational costs, operational costs, the beautification of Kampala, the roads, the lighting, um, uh, of course, the courtesies. Um, they costed 61.7 billion, all in total. So that is what I know. Okay. Now, right on the Prime Minister, obviously you've added value to that area. From Entebbe to Mondoro, mm. it looks different. In fact, the entire of Makindia division. Now, my question is, if you are able, in a short time, to be able to build those roads and make them look beautiful like they are, that means you have it in you as a government to actually change our city, you know, if you can be able to pull this off in six months and you make the area of Munyonyo and Entebbe look this, why don't you use the same modus operandi and sort Kampala? Because now you have shown us you can. My brother, like I usually tell my fellow cabinet ministers, my cabinet members, that we have to do things differently. And we are going to do them differently. The fact is, the government of Uganda knew of this NAM in 2019. And we had offers. Remember the offer from India? Do you remember? But in 2021, 22, India pulled out, withdrew because they were injuriously affected by COVID. 
19. And so we had to, to, to do it ourselves. So you can imagine we have put in place that facility and the beautified Kampala to this far within this short period. Remember we had the other offer. So the offer after withdrew after the withdrawal of the government of India, we have done it ourselves. And so it's not that we have done the conversion center. We we came to Munyonyo because they we had invested there earlier, I remember in Chogam. We have our our our, our portfolio and then it will it, they have other facilities. They have other conferences. You we could not organize a conference because you cannot have that done in one year and the other one and the other and the other one. So we based ourselves on the already what is already there, there. on the already existing facilities. You know, right honourable, uh, right honourable Prime Minister and you, honourable Minister, the people of Kampala, the pulse of the city that I feel, for those who have been able to see what has been built, is like, are you moving, uh, moving ahead, going to use this modus operandi? And take it to Rubaga, and take it to Nakawa, so that it oh, runs. Yes. Because now you have demonstrated capacity. Look at this northern bypass. It's a 20-kilometer stretch. It has taken over 21 years to build, sir. But if you can do that in a few months, what have we been waiting? What have we been waiting no, for? No, let me tell you, my brother. That's why I want to commend the president. Mm -hmm. I, can, I don't know whether I can get that letter. He wrote to me so that SFC, uh, SFC Brigade can come to Kampala and start helping us to build the roads. Some of these roads have been built by SFC. SFC, you heard about it? Yes. yes. And they're not going to leave even after now. They are going to stay until we have a clean city. I repeat where these people who are planting bananas will plant them in the near future. But do you know why they are planting the bananas? They, they want to be seen. Them because they no, they, some of them are leaders. No, wait, no, wait. The tarmac roads, they, will have, no. they wouldn't find a way but, to plant But some bananas. of them are leaders in Kampala. True or false? I've just been having well, conversations. Well, well. Who are supposed to do the work? Exactly. Actually, the Lord Mayor of Kampala, who is now under house arrest, he cannot even leave his house, climbs. I'm, I've, I've been talking to him a short while ago that his power has been taken away, his executive powers, by the government of the NRM. So the man cannot work like he's expected to work. As we speak, but he's always he's under, he's under house arrest. No. He's under house arrest. So is Dr. Besage. When your guests are coming to Kampala, that doesn't look good, does it? No, but they were care. busy digging. No, me. they have but been busy digging. Uh, they have been doing criminal. <laughs> they have been busy digging our roads, getting a hole to dig a, a, a pit. When you're a mayor, it was a I repeat a camp. It was a demonstration. But, but you, you can't if, destroy the infrastructure. Know, if you break the law, if you break the law, you, you face the penalty. I can't. And if you're about to break the law, you pay the penalty even more. So for, for them, they deserve what they're getting. Yeah. Because simply because either they're about to break the law or they're breaking the law. So for you to sit here and defend them, I am not. I'm not defending them. But but I wait, my brother. Uh, there the, is one question. Okay, that's why you don't find them. I am not. Yes, I'm you glorifying you what democracy. Them, that they're in jail. No, honourable uh, minister. Honourable minister. Honourable minister. My brother. No, I wanted to take them and saying the activities that they intended to get involved in and the activities that they got involved in is criminal and unacceptable. No, my brother. King Charles of England. I saw people who were carrying placards actually my, when he's being corrected and, saying, and they were saying, not my king. Excuse me, but brother. And you know why? My because brother. it's a I, democracy. Did you, did you read and, how many, and understand how many people were arrested in that, in that demonstration? I cannot. Why don't you tell the other side of the story that over 100 people are arrested in the streets of London during the demonstration? Can I ask you one question? You're here telling your, your, your listeners that they're not arrested in the streets of London? Please. As much as you fault that, but I fault it as well. My brother, I wanted to inform my brother that sometimes we deceive our people. Absolutely. When we are looking for support during elections, you say, I'm going to do wonders in Kampala. Isn't it? Yeah. If you see you cannot do anything, why not resign? Instead of blaming others. Yes. 
If you have done nothing, why don't you resign? So the principle of just protesting, expressing yourself, no. is not allowed in the present day Uganda? No, wait, my brother. It's allowed, absolutely. So why can't you let them... Provided you follow the procedures of, of getting uh, the permission to go and demonstrate, and you go and demonstrate at the right place, in, uh, which are being permitted to demonstrate, there is absolutely no problem. I want to get, my off, brother, this, I want to get no, off this point. No, no, no. Let, let me, let me put my that. point. Yes. We, everybody is welcoming our visitors. True or false? Including NT. Ugandans are very welcoming people. Yes. Now, for you, a leader in the opposition, who is supposed to be an example? You are busy destroying the infrastructure that has been built with borrowed money sometimes. I'm telling you, you are busy digging the holes. What type of leadership is this? Instead of also getting involved in one or two activities to show solidarity, to show solidarity, Prime Minister, they are looking. Prime no, they are looking. They are, are coming to Kampala, but only to hear that members of the opposition are locked up in their houses. They cannot move, as if their houses are places, are places of detention. Do not underestimate this Prime Minister. Talk about. They are more sophisticated than you hear who is glorifying those people. They will fully understand the, the, the circumstances. They will ask assistance, their, their uh, people, to uh, high commissioners and ambassadors, or to find the circumstances in which those people have been arrested. And let me put this straight. Let me put this straight. Let me put this straight. There is no, in not any circumstances can I underestimate our prime minister. That's one thing I want to put clear. And but I have, but well. I only have the, uh, the singular you. opportunity to have this interaction. And, 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 uh, and so, so, so let me ask. No, even let me, let question. me, no, let have me. questions for the people of Uganda. Okay. With all respect, my brother, the there is one question I want to ask you. These people have been here, and the potholes have been there, isn't it? Why demonstrate today? Why? Is that the way to go? Why? Basically, has been here. Rukwag has been here. Bob Wayne has been here. Why did they, did they, they demonstrate if they are now busy trying to show the public that they are, they are concerned about the potholes? And the, some of the potholes have all been worked on. Well, right on, Ever Prime Minister, if you didn't lock them up, they could express themselves better, but now they are locked up in their own homes. But they have been on TV. Why don't you go and get messages from them? Because I saw them on NTV. Did I die? You know you are asking a genius. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, let, let me not dwell much on the members of the opposition. After okay. all, they have declared to, 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 to protest all over the country. And, and so that's the music perhaps the, the NRM government and them will be facing as we watch we, the people of Uganda. So when the heads of state arrive tomorrow, what is it that Uganda can push as an agenda that is Uganda-centric or African-centric so that you just don't meet in, the, in that fancy meeting hall and you end up talking about Gaza? Because everybody is coming from all over the world. They have their own interests. I know this is not a Ugandan summit, but if we are hosting... It's an the, international summit. Yeah, it's an international summit, but if we are hosting, somehow the Ugandan voice or the African voice is supposed to come through. What is it that as you know, East Africa, for example, would want to have? in the summit i know uganda has got the opportunity to set the agenda at global level on matters of security economy as well as social and political stability because those are the big major 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 norms yes how do you and as, you know, no. and as you know, and as you know, President Yoweri Museveni is one of the most experienced leaders, most experienced leaders in Nam. And as a country, we are lucky that he's going to now be able to lead this coalition for the benefit of the people of Uganda. That is securing ourselves, and also, uh, furthermore, the markets. Uh, for our groups and of course getting more investment opportunities tourism and also these are the uh, member countries of nam the Isn't experience there a that 
that the minister, prime ministers and, and, and presidents will come to Kampala, will be Munyonyo, converging Munyonyo, and at the end of the day, it's a photo opportunity, and, 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 and nothing comes back tangible for, for the, the African continents. I can you request you, yes. and the viewers, to listen very carefully to President Museveni's speech tomorrow. Very carefully. And through that speech, you'll be able to know the direction in which he intends to take NAM. This is an opportunity for President Museveni to reinvent NAM and make NAM relevant and let NAM be on the, the international table and determine what the international order should be. This is the time, time for NAM to stop and, and tell the, to those who have always been lectured to NAM, intimidating NAM and threatening NAM, the time for lectures have come to an end. We want to be treated as equals. We want to be treated with respect. We want to be able to exercise our values, our traditions, without intimidation and without threats. The continuous use of the issue of democracy, the continuous use of human rights issues, the continuous use of terrorism as an excuse to intimidate us cannot continue as, as members of NAM. But you know. So NAM is, is saying that we have to be the third force in the world order. Just like the, as, as, we always, as, as we were before during the Cold War, we're the third force. And we are the, the biggest group in the United Nations. We have to be respected in terms of uh, our independent sovereignty, in terms of being treated equally, in terms of uh, transformation of the uh, financial markets, and in terms of opportunities in the new markets. You know, where the real clout and the real power is, as we speak right now, I don't it know has converted in Davos. The World Economic Forum is going on in Davos. And some of the members of NAM have actually been invited there. That's where the power is. Which power? The money. Which, the which global power? influence. And, and, and what has Davos done to Uganda, if I may ask you? What has Davos done to Uganda all these years? What has Davos done to Uganda? That's almost nothing. In fact, they give us with one hand and they take more with the, with the other hand. They, they, they intimidate us, they threaten us, and they lecture us, and they tell us to accept their values and ways of life and change our entire culture into almost madness. And we cannot accept it. And that's why NAM is here. And tell those in Davos, Davos, listen to us. Tomorrow, Davos will listen to President Museveni's speech, and President Museveni will tell him in no uncertain terms that enough is enough. Okay, right on, Neighbor Prime Minister, before we take a break, uh, can the world really listen? See what happens. Almost every year, every major country invites African heads of state the Beijing Africa Summit in Beijing, the Tokyo Africa Summit in Tokyo, the, even Turkey, even India now, everybody has started calling our president. They go in big numbers. Sometimes they even put them in a bus. These are the people we're dealing with, and it's shameful. I'm going to represent the president in another in the, in the, India no, Africa Summit. Italy Africa Summit. Can you imagine? Yes. Right on, right on Prime Minister. So, why, why don't we bring the Italian Prime Minister to come to our suburb of Kampala and meet us here and put us together in a bus and you land in, in Rome and you take a bus and oh, oh, you are our right on Prime Minister. You are our leader. We, we also demand respect from them. Because when we see you go there in Tokyo and before that, before you, you are in Washington, after that you, you are in Delhi, after you are in Beijing, you, are in you want to mean that uh, we are always on the move? Well, I've seen those summits. In that, is that is some the two heads of state are going to one individual. That's what happens. I don't think they're going to one individual. Uh, I will take a diplomatic uh, path. I will not answer that one. You see, you see, uh, it shows the desperation. It shows the desperation in which you can The desperation to access resources. The desperation to uh, to uh, to uh, to, uh, to with, uh, access the the voting powers of those countries to the desperation that, that they need from these African countries in terms of to be able to determine what happens. Right. Let, 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 let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. Okay, China was not a member of the. In, uh, China was not, was not a member of G seventy seven. No, China was not a member of the Security Council. Okay, until when the. When a vote was taken in the UN General Assembly in 1976, okay, the whole of Africa, all of Africa, the votes by Africa is the one that reinstated China in its rightful place in the Security Council and removed Taiwan from, from the Security Council. That is the power, that is the power that Africa has 
And that's the power that the other countries fear, and that's the reason why they invite Africa, because they know if Africa is together, consolidated, it can move things. And, that, and that's why the respect of moving things, they invite those capitals. Honorable Minister, Honorable Right Prime, right Prime Minister, we're going to take a break. And uh, on the spot, we'll be right back. My, My name, name is Patrick, Patrick Kamara, Kamara, and tonight, tonight my, my guests are the Right Honorable Prime, Prime Minister of Uganda, Uganda Robin, Robin Anabanja, Anabanja, and the Minister of State for International Relations, the Honorable Okeloriam. And we're discussing the benefits of NAM that is being hosted in Kampala. Uh, you know, Honorable Okeloriam, we have seen, you know, people and their kiosks and their business and their livelihoods cleared off some of the roads where the visitors are going to. And sometimes, you, if you have visitors coming to see you, must your poor neighbors disappear? Why can't you let Ugandans be? After all, our visitors know they are coming to Uganda, a country, nothing they don't know. That, that is true. And um, what was done to clear and, uh, those temporary structures was done in, uh, within the law. The uh, given notice, they knew very well that uh, those structures that were on the roadsides were illegal structures. They were not supposed to be there in the first place. And they've continuously been warned that at any time those structures will be removed uh, from there. So it should not have surprised them that, that uh, it was removed at, at, at that particular, the particular time. But it was not done Ill illegally. But those who put the structures had put structures where they're supposed to have been uh, built and with the permission of, of uh, the authorities of the authorities build them there. Right on the Prime Minister, that's, that's about the politics. When people's livelihoods are destroyed, at the moment uh, when you're having... What I know as a leader of government business, that the, those Ugandans who were alongside the roads in congested areas, government provided some support through KCCA to relocate them temporarily for security reasons. Remember, we have had issues concerning security because of coalition. And so security agencies intervened uh, to eliminate all those potential, uh, potential sources of insecurity. To me, we should have brought We should have brought it. When you, I'm sure you attended uh, COP 27, 28, 27 in Dubai. COP 28, yes. Uh, in, in Dubai. Dubai. You know, this business of having vehicles prepared to get the, the most ministers when they're going to Dubai, I'm told, actually will pay for their own vehicles, you know? No. I was given four vehicles. Yeah, but you are the, the prime minister, not every, given, <laughs> not every delegate. So, no, I was given four vehicles. I had um, a vehicle. I had the first security car. You, are you should be an, an exception. You no, should be an exception anywhere you go. Even I, I got a car. I learned very nice Mercedes Benz. That's, that's, that's expected, but... He was given a car. <clears throat> we had the Anua. Anua was given a car. And, uh, no, so, are we, are we, like, are we picking we? every delegate using Ugandan... No, no, no. no, no. no. Or they no. should be paying for themselves. And I'm sorry. Money comes to Uganda. No, no, no. no. I think I think you misunderstood that the the, the, the courtesies, the other reciprocity, the courtesies that we gave was one plus five. Yes. The principal, the head of state, and five other people of their choice. One is naturally the minister of foreign affairs, and then the other the other uh, three or four is people of, the, of their choice who were. And this is uh, reciprocity or the principle in which the practice when you go to, to, to these conferences. When I fly abroad as Minister of Foreign Affairs, on official visits to the, all these countries, I'm naturally and automatically given hospitality and courtesies by those countries. The Minister of Foreign Affairs have come, there's a vehicle for you, there's a vehicle for assistance, and we'll, 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 we will look after you for the next three days or four days where, when you're there. Standard. When, when the same country gives me that hospitality, when they visit Uganda, I'm expected. And, and the principal was given the same courtesy. So, one so five. no, no, it depends on, on the generosity. No, when, the head of state is one plus five. The minister is one plus two. two. Okay, so tomorrow the heads of state arrive. 
And then the ministers have been meeting, and before that, they've taken part. But on the other hand, I wanted to tell you that some, we got some support from other countries. Yes. We got uh, support from China. China. They gave us seven vehicles. Yeah, so, so the seven vehicles. vehicles. Yes, they did. So now, President Joe so Williams. We wanted to, uh, to frugally use the little resources we have. That's how we say, though. Let us use the vehicles in government. Otherwise, now you'd be complaining they bought big cars. They did this. So, for me, what I'm saying that these people of the media do not want us to, you know, when you do something good, they want to make it bad. Did we do bad to naturally? I, I, I was trying to ask you? whether you, if for every delegate that comes to Uganda, you're sending them a vehicle to pick them. We do. And, I, and the, for. No, but you have said there are some, some, yes. some levels, others some are coming levels. themselves. Some don't yet. But, but, uh, but the, the Prime Minister here did direct uh, all ministers, full ministers and ministers of state, to forfeit their vehicles uh, for this uh, summit. And all of the ministers abided, and all the vehicles are packed in Bunyonyo, and they're now being used by uh, the member delegation. Yes, in Kololoya. So, President Museven is going to be chairman of NAM for about three years. Oh, yes. And also the G7. Not about three years. For three years. <laughs> and, and, and chairman G7 plus China maybe for a year. What kind of leverage? Uh, policies and politics. What do we, should we expect from his chairmanship of NAM? And that is Uganda. Because it's, that's, that's a big thing, isn't it? You'll appreciate, first of all, my brother Kamara, that NAM is a group of countries, or the, group, or the biggest group of countries within the United Nations, in the United Nations. And uh, the, what is important for President Museveni, and which is determined to do, is to ensure that NAM is relevant, and all the members of NAM feel that NAM is relevant, hence they should create an atmosphere of unity within NAM in order to be able to start determining and influencing uh, international world order. Under President Seven, a revolutionary leader, have you, have, have you known? President Seven does not stand any nonsense and does not accept the kind of the attitude that the West treats and always treated the NAM members and South South, South South members. So he he will then, this time, as I said earlier, the traditional way in which the West countries have always uh, intimidated us, influenced us, and uh, blackmailed us is the, under the use of as if they are the masters of democracies, as if they are the champions of human rights, and as if they, it's only them who know about this terrorism. And they use that platform as an opportunity to intimidate and, 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 and threaten us. What we are saying now, time has, we have come to age. Most of the leaders who in NAM are saying that we need to be on the, on the table. NAM came about because of the uh, Cold War, where it was East and West. And we, NAM members of NAM, do not want to be part of East and West. But all along we have been quiet. But now we want to be heard, we want to be seen, we want to be influential. So what has been discussed recently, the last two days, is how we can uh, be part of the international community, influencing issues of climate change, influencing issues of uh, the financial world, world order, in influencing issues yeah. of access to uh, to fund, to, to the markets, world markets, and to determine issues of human rights, democracies, and the fight against terrorism. And, and, and there is no other better person than President Museveni to champion this uh, cause. And I've had an opportunity to meet him to some, some very influential leaders. For example, I met the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of India, and he told me that he, this would have not been a better timing. At a time when the world is saying that we cannot continue the, the old way, with only one or two countries policing the world, it, the, this could not be a better timing for President Museveni to, to lead this forum. Pray to the Prime Minister, the international financial architecture is more or less in the hands of the Americans and the British and other countries, of course the World Bank and IMF. Why hasn't NAM created some kind of a lending mechanism 
to its members 120 so that you don't have to rely on, on World Bank IMF so that the NAM has the capacity to put together that financial architecture that could maybe rival the, the IMF and World Bank and maybe you can say you are walking towards uh, some kind of international financial freedom. Like I told you earlier, this is an opportunity <coughs> yes. for NAM member countries to also be at the stage and come up with ideas that can econom economically uh, um, liberate us. That's all I can say. Okay. Uh, what do we know, Honorable uh, Kelorium, some members of NAM, including here in East Africa, at the bilateral level, they're not even able to work together efficiently. We've, We've just, just seen, seen what happened between Kenya and, and Tanzania, Tanzania over the aviation uh, scoreboards. We know what is right now, I think, a, a, a border is closed between Burundi. Uh, Burundi is closing her border. We have had our issue with over oil, um, you know, imports in, in Kenya. And sometimes we cannot even sell our milk. But we can come in a big grouping like NAM and act no more. Yet at a bilateral level, right, honorable prime minister, countries in this region themselves, you find our teachers are throat. I think that the, the beauty and the word you use, we can act as, as normal. And the fact that we are sitting down in the same room and talking and discussing and debating these items, that's what's important. The danger would be if these countries are not talking to each other. It is natural to have misunderstanding, but what is important that in, in these understandings, you find a solution to resolve it and continue to engage business as, as usual. What is happening in the region is not unusual. If you look at the international, the world, the world over, you also to realize that many countries, including in Europe, where there is trade disputes ongoing, even within the EU countries, there are ongoing trade disputes among themselves. But eventually, it is uh, it resolved through dialogue, through engagement. And I'm absolutely sure that the conflict between uh, Rwanda and Burundi will soon come to uh, to an end because the two heads of states will, after uh, assistance and supports by uh, their colleagues within the Eastern community, will come that to, to realize that they are both, not both countries are losing and it's better for them to resume trade between the, the two countries and then resolve that matter. What is happening between Tanzania and Kenya on the airlines business? I think that is very short term and I think that will be reversed. Has been res resolved. It will be resolved. Yes. How about I Tanzania? think the principles of NAM are known. Mm. Mutual respect, consensus, consensus building. Um, we talk about peaceful coexistence. Those are principles. There are five. He can enumerate on others. And so to me, there is what the president usually call um, strategic patience. You know what was happening between us and our brother. Remember? Our sister country. Strategic patience. I know they will resolve like he has said. Through mutual respect, coexistence, and of course now that they have a champion of peace, mm -hmm. President Museveni as a leader of NAM, this will come to pass. You know, there are many platforms, right on about Prime Minister and Roman Minister, that have been created to ease uh, the doing of business on the continent, trading together, Africa to trade with herself. But when you realize Africa is not trading her with herself in a more, you know, you know, better way. For example, the Africa continental free trade area was created in Kigali some years back. But up to today, there's little of African countries trading amongst themselves. So sometimes, some of these platforms will ratify them, but they are not of benefit. So what stops us to trade amongst ourselves like we need to? That's why we have NAM. That's why we have COMESA. Continuous discussion will help in solving all of this and strategic patience. One of the platforms that we have lost 
is the ACOA, <laughs> the Af Africa Growth Opportunity Act that was signed, brought into function by the administration of Bill Clinton, that was allowing us to trade with the United States, such a huge opportunity. We never really seized that opportunity. So sometimes opportunities just come and disappear and we never take advantage of them. In fact, I'm not one of those Ugandans who are worried because it was stopped. Why? Because we never took advantage of such a huge opportunity like we should have right on the Prime Minister. The Agor. I think Agor, Agor, the founders of Agor, or the architects of Agor was President of the But um, the toxic atmosphere between the uh, United States of America could not allow Uganda to fully uh, take advantage of, of, uh, of Agor. Uh, continuously, the United States did not seem to be uh, uh, deliberately aged and trying to frustrate Uganda's intention to ex export more towards the United States. Because uh, continue at every stage, the United States government seems to try and influence us to accept one thing or the other, which we would refuse. And in so refusing to accept what the Americans were determined to push down our throats, they will then make it difficult and more challenging for us to, uh, to access their market. Hence, Agua could not, uh, and, and could not succeed in the United States market because of the toxic uh, attitude which America had towards... Uh, now, recently, these people want us to, oh, to drop our law. That is the condition they are giving us. You, as a Ugandan, would you allow us to allow homosexuality here so that we can trade with Americans? It's a question to you, you have been asking me. I'm not in the business of answering questions. My question, my job is to ask. Ah, no, 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 you also have to, you are a Ugandan. I know you are a leader, but by the virtue of the fact that you are here, sometimes you also need to answer some of these hard questions. You are a Ugandan. the issue of minority rights, this are going started in 2000. So no, you know the conditions. Us, Should we allow? Our gamut, the, our gamut industry should have changed long time ago. But but we never took that advantage. No, but we tried. We tried. But uh, the Americans uh, at every stage made it very difficult. Each time we had elections, uh, they would come up with all kinds of attacks against the government of Uganda, all types of threats against the government, all types of ways to limit opportunities for the government of Uganda into, into, into their market. Then uh, one or two years after elections, then they'll give us, give us some breathing space, then we'll go back to the next elections, then they'll start again that kind of matter. On this occasion, as the Prime Minister said, we had a choice to choose. Do we accept uh, the American determination to shove down our throat that we should accept the, the culture and the values of LGBTQ, homosexuality, and lesbian in Uganda, or do we accept uh, Agoa? Our choice was no. We cannot accept uh, the culture which are shoving down our throat of LGBTQ, homosexuality, and lesbianism. We will not accept it without forfeit Agoa. Okay. Now, let, let me tell you, the way forward yes. is for us to take advantage of NAM and create more opportunities in other countries. Exactly. To overcome the loss yes. of our Yes. We have opened up markets in UAE. You are aware. They are taking a lot of our fresh fruits. We are opening up, up markets in Algeria. Mm -hmm. we are, yes, and we are opening up. We are very aggressive now, let me tell you. Understand Angola, Angola is interested in our coffee. Yes. But I want to read the Prime Minister now to come. We have, no, UAE is, is coming here to invest here. The elite group of companies, it's a government company for UAE. They are coming here to add value to our tea and export it directly. Two factories. Yes. No, five. So let me, let me, now let's look at things. We are also not, by the way, we are also very strategic now. The, uh, Hello? The UAE are building an international airport. Yes. Chidepo. Chidepo. And building five, five star hotels in the depot. It is signed, agreed, and the process the process started already. Mm -hmm. We we opened up markets in Serbia. Hope you are aware. The president was there, and we opened up our markets. Now talking about markets, I know, for example, you, right on the prime minister, you have been going around 
districts with these agric agricultural expos, mm. up to almost 17 places you have gone to? Not only 17. Okay, I don't I'm know how many districts we have covered. But, I, but I know you're supposed to be going to Busoga. So. Yes. <laughs> 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 you are following me. What, what, what exactly? You seem to be very passionate about these expos. What have you seen them? How do they help the local Ugandans where they go? If they, if if uh, somebody selling p tomatoes and meets the other person of uh, of onions, how does an onion seller empower a tomato seller? <laughs> In Busoga. As you know, I'm a prime minister. I'm a prime minister of action. That you know, you have always told me. I'm a prime minister of action, not a, an arms chair best. On in the office, sitting like uh, this, teleconferencing, no. I'm a Prime Minister of Action. And uh, I believe it's quite cost effective for a Prime Minister to identify problems and opportunities, more especially problems, before they become crucial or critical, and curtail them and enable me to coordinate very well. Secondly, I'm not the woman of post-mortem. You know, the Auditor General, people start moving mm. up and down. You waste a lot of money moving up and down. No, for me, I want us to prevent some of these wasteful expenditures before they excavate. Act on them there and so then. So these expos you've been going to, Yes, I, I have found out that uh, PDM is doing very well. Yes. I've also found out that uh, some of our extension workers have not been facilitated. They don't have motorcycles. Yes, the extension workers, they're expected to be in the garden, but they're in the offices waiting for salary. I remember by the time I was in Mubende, Cassandra and Mitiana. That's when I discovered that the extension grant had been scrapped. We restarted it so that these extension workers can move. I've also discovered that this is a working formula where the Ministry of Agriculture was directed by the President to do farm education on spot, farm educa farmer education. We educate our farmers and also facilitate these other supportive, uh, supportive agencies of government because we interrelate. Sometimes we have been having the Ministry of Water organizing water sources, yes. but the Ministry of Energy, eh, just one poll, you find that facility not working. I was in Uyende some time back. We have organized a cold room for our fish, for our, for our fi fishermen and women that side, but because of one poll, they had not connected the power. To the and that facility was organized in 2012, and many others, the milk coolers are across the country. So we go as a wall of government, Minister of Energy, Minister of Education, Minister of Water, Minister of Agriculture, all the agencies in the Ministry of Agriculture, Nagrik. You know. We have also that tells you right on the prime minister that these administrative units at the local level are not working if it's going to take a prime minister to no no for me or. mine is to ignite you know ignition mm -hmm. to ignite and then leave the districts moving and this is not only me like I've told you we move as a whole of government the ministries departments and the agencies and they have gone remember the president was in northern Uganda the whole president went to northern Uganda. Remember, we are in Achori, we were in Arua. We went to all those districts of Madiokoro, Obongi. We went everywhere, Nebi and many others. The president himself, if the president himself can go to Masaka, remember, we're in Masaka. Why not me, the prime minister? Okay. Am I bigger than the president? No. If the president can <coughs> go, and say, please do A, B, C, D. So, they, so the ministers, by the way, the ministers are moving. Okay. And I've been seeing uh, you, you, you NTV covering them in the field. Yes, now you've talked about the, the parish development model now that you've introduced that and you think it is working. I want, well, I would want it to work. But I remember about four or five years, there was a bumper harvest of maize. 
and there was a lot of maize, and people were just choking with their maize without even putting in one trillion that you have put in. Now that you have put in money, 100 million per parish, Ugandans are going to produce. Right, Honorable Prime Minister, it's most likely they will choke with their products. Like we see pineapples here all over, and somebody is asking you, buy it for 10 pineapples at, at 5,000 shillings. Are you prepared? How prepared are you to add value or even look for the market? But this for, the, for the producers is coming out. No. Which will, in two, three months, we'll okay. be having. Let me first of all say this that for the first time in the history of this country, Ugandans have got support from government directed to the parish across the country, everywhere. This is an opportunity for the people to, pro to be productive. That's why we now have NAM, with the NAM we are talking about. We are looking for markets left, right, center. So let the people go in their gardens, use the money profitably, and government and other agencies of government we look for a way of marketing. You, you, the moment we get investors, we shall add value on, on to your, that pineapple. Your, the other day, remember, I was in Iruero with the investor. Mm -hmm. We have just given him some piece of land to organize his factories and also do demonstration farms so that the outgrowers can learn from him. And we export that, 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 those products to, 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 to UAE and these other parts of the you, world. You know, the people have received money, right, Honorable Minister, are going into agriculture. It will take only three or four months and the products are out. Hmm. Now, they will not be able to add value there and then. Yes, you have a market in Qatar and market in Serbia. They, they are not going to take things in their raw form. So in the, in the immediate, uh, what is the immediate solution for the products that are coming out tomorrow? Because you give them money, you started giving them money months back. And they not months, they say yeah, yeah now. Yeah, yeah, so By the way, the products are out. Mm. What are they doing with it? Let me be taking it. But that's why, that's why. That's why we have uh, things like the uh, recent business for us. Hmm. That's why the president uh, and the prime minister, when they travel abroad, they, they have to uh, summon and they try and invite investors who are targeted. This will not just ask anybody. Who are targeted towards absorbing these uh, products who are coming on the market to set up, give them free land, we encourage them to set up the factories here so that they can be able to absorb these, these products that will be in mass production soon. So this is, it, it is uh, deliberate action by government to attract investors in now addressing the, uh, the, the issue of the market and the issue of where do these products go. And that's why we keep encouraging these investors to keep coming in the country, giving them the, the incentives and put them, them to the base here. Okay. We, we have also, we have also, we have also technically been guided. Even the president wrote a full book Remember the four acre model? Yes. That book. And we have guided our people on which enterprises to go for. Most of these enterprises we are encouraging our people okay. to do have the market internally. You are selecting for them? Yes, we have. We are telling them you can go for Pigari. <laughs> yes. If you are not a Muslim, we are telling them you can go for. Uh, for, for, for for, for poultry, we are telling them, especially those with limited land, okay. we are also telling them to go for these other products, the vegetables, because the market is readily available within the country. Right, Honorable Prime Minister, you are the leader of government business. Of course. I would want to know the strategy for 2024. What are the things you are looking at that you think will make us, our country, better? We have a manifesto. That, that is an agreement the of, of the people of Uganda and the NRM government and the president. We have a three-year development plan which we have been implementing and we continue to implement. So those are our guiding principles. So we shall continue to implement the manifesto of the NRM as promised to the people and also as a leader of government business in parliament. We have a legislative agenda from the government side, okay. which parliament uses to do its business. We shall continue with that. And three, I will continue to coordinate and guide government together with the ministers 
the and issue, they yes. The issue of corruption is still a big deal in Uganda. In fact, it started in 1986, President Yoweri Museveni's 10-point uh, program. I think point number seven was fighting corruption. But it looks like uh, corruption has become such a big problem. You can f not fight corruption like you can see a, a cat chasing a rat. <laughs> no. Um, we have agencies of government that help us to fight corruption. We have the Auditor General of Government. We have the IGG. We have uh, the, Ant uh, the State House Anti Corruption Unit. We have the CID. We have everybody. We have the courts. And I believe they are trying to do their work. For example, recently, the Auditor General was directed, remember, in the cabinet, yes. that you go and audit the payroll. And he has discovered something. Okay. And when they bring these reports, they end up in the park. Now you will see the opposition claiming that they are doing some work. And yet it is the Auditor General who has been directed by government. I am the one who wrote the letter to go and find out A, B, C, D. We have come up to find out that three thousand um, ghost workers are on our payroll. So we are going to, for, for example, I told the Ministry of Finance that this is now your work. Kuraka the whip. Okay. By the time these other agencies of government come, we shall have really people are going to their heads are going to roll you will see i want to conclude with a few things uh, one of them is a rumor on the streets of kampala that uh, a cabinet reshuffle is imminent <laughs> it's normal <laughs> does, does that in a way slow down business like maybe people feel that the, like the sword of damakos is hanging on the head <laughs> <laughs> about to cut and that, uh, with respect does it slow does it affect you do you do you, your team are they are they affected by this uh, an eminent cabinet reshuffle? For me, I'm a Christian. <laughs> uh, we believe in God's timing as being the best. God's timing is the best. So uh, for me, I look at myself as somebody who got an opportunity to serve. And that's why I serve unreservedly. So the powers to appoint and disappoint have got somebody with that power. <laughs> Not me. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why but, should uh, but the truth is, if, if you are a minister, and the prime minister is doing a fantastic job, so she's not to worry about. But if you're a minister and uh, you're doing a job, you're bringing results, you are, you know, this, you're causing impact uh, in, 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 in government, your hands are clean, uh, then I don't think you have to lose uh, sleep. Uh, but, 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 with all respect, but, Honorable Kerouriam, you and the appointing authority have been a constant in you and your position and him in his position. You can say that, but maybe others. Because I'm, 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 <laughs> I, I, meet those, I meet those categories mm -hmm. of what I've just been t telling you, so I don't, I don't listen to sleep over it. But if I didn't have that, that, those categories of what I told you, then I'll lose sleep over it. All right, I want to conclude on a sad note. The distinguished daughter of Uganda, the Honorable oh. Cecilia Guar, mm. passed on. And she's been a very instrumental person, a devout Christian, a serious legislator, a mother and a, and a grandmother. It's an incredible leader. What, what do you remember of Cecilia? First and foremost, on behalf of government, allow me to condole with all Ugandans, more especially the family. Uh, of the late Honorable Cecilia Ogwal, the <coughs> Parliament of Uganda, the Speaker, Deputy Speaker, the President, have uh, interacted with Cecilia Ogwal many times when we are in front of the President, uh, the Ministers, and everybody in government, the leader of opposition and our members of opposition, for having lost such a nationalist. I worked with her in the commission, the parliamentary commission. She's such a mother, I cannot tell you. For me, I was appointed to head the audit committee. I was the chair of the audit committee in the parliamentary commission. You know, she has been an accountant. And she would come to help me. She would advise you genuinely. We went to a number of forums outside the country. 
she would go beyond these political affiliations. She was above that. She was a nationalist, I'm telling her, a patriot. And so Uganda has lost um, a person of that caliber. We shall miss her dearly. Yeah. I'm telling you. you the Parliament of Uganda will miss this lady dearly. Honorable Kilorium, what do you remember of the Honorable Cecilia Wa? I think this is a, it's a very sad uh, time for um, the country, particularly the Parliament of Uganda. Because this is a, a, a lady who was uh, highly respected uh, in Parliament. Uh, for those who are, of us who have been in Parliament for many years, uh, she has be, always believed in the principle of democracy, and particularly the, the principle of multi-party democracy. She's that kind of legislator who just does not stand up and uh, talk for the sake of talking. She it was very con constructive in her, in her contribution and debate. She was well informed uh, on what she, she would debate in the Parliament, and she would be very uh, constructive in her engagement with both parts of, 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 of the House. But on a personal note, uh, I always felt to see her as if she was my mother. And she almost, almost treated me also like uh, a son. I felt the same way. And uh, she always, whenever we met her, she would say, you're my son, and therefore, you know, uh, have respect over, over in the manner in which you talk to me as, uh, as, as your mother. And I did, and I did do everything possible uh, to make sure that I respected her. Uh, respect her. And uh, I think the biggest loss uh, in, in this government is that this, this is a lady who had uh, the year of the president, this is a person who was uh, very close to the president and was very frank in a dialogue with uh, the president. There are few people these days who, uh, in Uganda who are in that kind of position who can sit to the president and they can exchange frank uh, If expressions. I can tell you my Some own Some people are shy. My own personal experience with Cecilia, I always called her Auntie, Auntie Cecilia. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how, but yeah. Auntie Cecilia is how I called her. Yes. And uh, but you know I never met her without her asking me, let us pray first. <laughs> right. Every time we did uh, something, uh, we prayed first. That so is true. Rest in but peace. I think that, that, that Auntie Cecilia. without sounding tribal, the, the, uh, she is a very big loss to uh, the Lao community where she comes from. And uh, she was a, a very good mentor to remember many years later. Particularly the the, uh, the uh, women's movement, mm. as part of young girls who come into leadership. I want to thank you so much, Right Honourable Prime Minister. What's going to be your concluding remark? I want to thank you and thank NTV for giving us this opportunity to explain to the country what is all about NAM. I want to thank you, brother, thank you. for having accepted to come at such a short notice. Thank you. I want to thank Ugandans who have been watching us. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the president. I know he's busy now with his visitors. Um, we shall give him all the support. Tomorrow is the opening day for the summit. Uh, you know, <coughs> the technical people have come up with a working document. It started from uh, yeah. Baku. That is uh, Azerbaijan. Now, that working document has, been, has gone through the technical people for two days. Now the ministers, I believe you have done it. And tomorrow they are handing over the, that technical document and the chair. Tomorrow is the day for Uganda. The president is going to be handed over the chair of NAM, non-allied movement, a group of 120 countries. And to me, this is an opportunity for us as a country to benefit. I'm telling you, the sky is going to be the limit. Right, Honorable Prime Minister, thank you so much. Honorable Minister, I want to thank you for the thank time you. you've given us, most, most of all, for having added value to our understanding of NAM and some other issues in the region and in our country. Ugandans, we are known to be a very happy people. We are always known to dazzle the visitors. Let's welcome and embrace them and give them a memorable time so that they can be able to come back again and again in our country. Remember, we also, I'm told you have a specific duty, a patriotic duty of smiling. That's smiling now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do anything. Just smile to the visitors. It will do the magic. Mm?
Good night and God bless you, God. <laughs>